Hi everyone, my name is Teresa Schofield, and I work for the World Resources Institute as Global Forest Watch's Product Specialist. Today, I'm going to provide a short demonstration on how to access and understand the new integrated deforestation alerts data via the Global Forest Watch website. First, let's go to the map by clicking Map at the top left here. On the map, three layers load by default. I'm going to switch them off so we can first focus on the alerts layer. You can find integrated deforestation alerts here under forest change on the left. If you'd like to know more about the methodology, citation, and coverage for alerts, or any layer for that matter, you can click on this information or metadata button for relevant details. This new layer combines three previously separate alert systems, GLAD-L, GLAD-S2, and RAD alerts. Each of these individual systems cover different areas and are updated at different time intervals. Here in the legend panel, you can select an individual alert system if you prefer, which I'll demonstrate now. Though we consider the integrated layer to be the best and latest source of monitoring information, some users may still prefer to reference an individual system. One potential reason someone might prefer to reference an individual system is that only one system has coverage in their region of interest, and the alerts might load faster by selecting one system at a time. For an example of the first reason, only GLAD alerts are currently available, for example, in the country of Mexico. You can verify if a system is available in a given country by looking at the metadata like we did earlier, or by turning on each system at a time while zoomed out. This is because when you're zoomed in, the higher resolution systems may take more time to load. I'd like to quickly note that GLAD L alerts, which we're looking at now, have a 30 meter native resolution while GLAD-S2 and RAD have a 10 meter native resolution. To integrate these alerting systems, GLAD-L is upsampled to match the 10 meter resolution of the other systems. You can access the 30 meter version of GLAD-L alerts by selecting that layer. For now, let's focus on the integrated alert layer and start by walking through confidence levels. This first category, detected by a single alert system, shows the lowest confidence level of alerts. This color will appear for areas that only saw one alert within the time range selected. High confidence indicates that loss was detected more than once by a single alert system within a pixel. The highest confidence this layer can offer is detection by more than one alert system at a time. You may notice that there are only two years of data available from the last date alerts were updated. Since these three alert types, alert system types, cover different time ranges, we made the decision to only show the data periods that overlap, thus the two year timeline. This integrated layer prioritizes providing an early indication of where deforestation may be happening so that users can follow up. In that sense, they prioritize speed over accuracy. For historic analysis, on the other hand, we encourage users to use the annual tree cover loss products, which prioritize accuracy over speed. I'd like to note that you can access data going further back than two years through the A API and the dashboards. For instructions, see the link we'll post in the chat of the webinar. To select a shorter date range, you can either click and drag the ends of the timeline to specific days, or you can select dates on the calendar, which I'll go ahead and demonstrate. Note that if an alert is detected by multiple systems on different days, the alert may disappear when you adjust the time slider or flip between individual alerts versus the integrated layer. For more information, see metadata where we first went or the explainer blog for this new layer. 
this geographic coverage layer shows coverage for whichever alert systems or system you've selected, which you can read about in the metadata. It's important to remember that these alert systems do have specific different limitations in coverage. Learn more about the geographic coverage of individual systems by selecting those layers and using this toggle, which I'll demonstrate now. You can also toggle this show only high and highest confidence alerts option, which will allow you to only view higher confidence alerts. This question mark icon will describe what that means. For now, I'm going to revert back to the integrated alert system and then perform an analysis. I can, of course, click on a region, a country, a municipality, and then click Analyze if I want statistics for that area. But I'm interested in a cluster of alerts. So I'm going to go here and draw a shape around it. So I'll click here on the analysis panel. I'll click draw or upload shape, start drawing. It may take a minute for the tool to load. And then I will draw my shape. Analysis results will reflect the filters I've selected in the legend. So since I've chosen integrated alerts for a specific time period, I will only see results that respect those parameters. I can click back into the legend to update any filters and then go back to the analysis results, which may take a moment to load, to see alert data. To share this analysis, I can click either the share analysis button here at the top right or click the same icon at the bottom right of the map. You're offered uh, the ability to share a link or an embed. I can also download these analysis results by saving this area and downloading stats through this download button, which you will need to save the area and reduce the alerts that you're viewing, perhaps by limiting the time range. I can do this on the map, but I can also do this on the dashboards, which we'll go to later. These alert download files list each alert's latitude and longitude, detection date, and confidence level per system. The same information is included when you download a file while viewing an individual alert system, just like uh, GLAD S2 alerts instead of the integrated layer, for example. We'll go to the dashboards in a moment, but for now, I'm already logged into my MyGFW account, so I'm going to save this area. And here you'll see I can opt in to receive alerts not just for potential deforestation, where I can choose the integrated alerts as the notifications I will receive or individual alert systems. I can also receive the fire alerts from the VIRS data set if I choose and a monthly summary. Now, notification emails will be sent whenever new forest change or fires are detected. And if you've received these emails in the past, you'll notice that new emails will note how much area was affected or covered by alerts, as opposed to a count of alert pixels. I'll save this area. If I want to, or if you want to access a saved area via the dashboards, click to go to the My GFW page at the top right portion of the site menu where all your saved areas will be listed. You can click on the area and be sent to its dashboard page. I'm going to go find an area that has alerts.
On the dashboards, we've adapted the forest change alerts widgets to map to match, excuse me, what you see on the map. Once it loads, I'll show you what I mean. And just like you you uh, will see in notification emails, these widgets note the area affected by these alerts. Go ahead and click on the forest change category. So here in the intersections button, you can select forest type or land category that you'd like to look at, as well as a date range, just like on the map, to examine, um, and whichever alert system or systems you'd like to view. That's all for now, but I want to stress how important it is to us that this new layer serves users who rely on these different alert systems. We'll send a survey to webinar participants and also welcome you to email us at gfw at wri.org with any feedback. We realize this new layout may come with challenges, so please tell us what you think. Thank you.